All right, good day, hey, bleh, good day, hey, hi, and welcome. Just want to make a little quick video here. Uh, get that out of there. About Gibson stop tailpiece, or tailpiece stops. So this is my SG3 here, and I keep hearing all kinds of videos about uh, tuning issues with the Gibsons. Now, I've never had any real issues with tuning other than any sort of non-locking system guitar, whether it was uh a gibson or say like my jackson over there something like that uh okay drastic temperature changes yeah your guitar may go in or out of tune going from one like say you know your cold vehicle in the middle of the winter into a warm bar or something like that yeah, i've had that happen before but i've had it happen with my acoustics you know like it's just a normal thing but in general no this guitar pretty much stays in tune yeah whatever uh, I talked in the last video about the headstock angle and the tuning peg alignment with the uh, strings, if that had something to do. But the only thing I could see happening is stuff binding up here. So one thing I do notice, and this is just strings in general, is that if you don't play a guitar every day or whatever, it seems like the strings, they get kind of settled onto the bridge, uh, into the saddles and onto the nut to the point where it can bind and it seems like once you play the guitar for a few minutes or whatever it kind of loosens everything up and then everything seems to slide better so it could be a nut issue that you have uh binding up on stuff and again that wouldn't be just a gibson issue that'd be any guitar but i think they're one of the issues is people don't know how to set up these guitars i've seen people try to solve their tuning issues by taking the strings and wrapping around like through this way and then over the bridge or the uh, the stop piece the tail piece uh, stop bar whatever whatever verbiage you want to call it and they go over like that to get a more even angle on it um and they put like a little ball end in there to hold the string in so that it's you know the ball end to ball end so they loop a ball end through the string and it goes there and then they wrap it around and it gives it more even i see why they do that in the explanation but i'm like Number one, it looks like crap. Number two, uh, you're going to probably scratch up this. And number three, you don't need to do it. Why? That reason? That reason. This is adjustable, people. Now, when you set up your Gibson guitar or any sort of, uh, say, like my Jackson does not have a stop piece. It's a fixed piece there and that's it. I cannot adjust that. This I can. So with the Jackson, I'll just show you what I'm talking about here as a comparison. So with the Jackson, I got a string through body. Okay, and I've got two adjustments on the tunematic bridge, uh, which is similar to this, uh, to the Gibson. But you can see I can't adjust the tension there other than the height. I can adjust the height and I can t adjust the individual saddles for intonation, but I can't adjust the actual tension. Uh, but because those strings are set out a little bit longer, it seems to have the right tension uh, anyway. Where the Gibson, one thing people don't realize is this is what sets your tension. So let's say you put on a brand new set of strings, okay? You've tuned the guitar up to pitch. Uh, what you do with the stop piece is just kind of like raise it up. Not that it's level. Uh, you can see like there's not an extreme angle on mine at all. Uh, and my 61 reissue is probably about the same angle. Uh, the 61 reissue I think actually has an even wider gap in between in fact i'll show you it just to show you so it's the same basically guitar oh no it's the same okay yeah well yeah i'm gonna show you this one too why not right um go for time yeah so now what you got here going on here is the same as the other two guitars uh so you can see there's not that much of an angle so going over the top of your stop bar that that's the you know you're going to get about an angle probably close to that but the this angle right here between the stop piece and the bridge okay when you put your strings on and you put it through there and you tune the guitar up okay and it, let's just say you've got all your uh saddles where they need to be that it's intonated so your intonation is good but you you don't it seems like the strings are not at proper tension when you're up to full pitch well the guitar is going to sound kind of sluggy and dull so what you're going to start and you'll also know notice the bigger issue will be you're going to get a lot of ringing and buzzing on the bridge 
And if you're ever playing live and you start hearing ringing, buzzing on the bridge, it's probably because you probably don't have the quite either the right intonation or the right tension. Now, what you do is you just turn these a little bit and you'll notice the tension will come up. You'll tune back to pitch. And when you tune back to pitch, the guitar will sound a lot more lively, a lot sharper, a lot more angry and more aggressive uh, and cleaner. And then you'll hear less buzzing. Now, once you, the buzzing completely goes away, leave it right there. If you don't hear any buzzing on the bridge, you don't need any more tension. Now, if you take these two screws and just say, well, why not just put them all the way down? Well, you can see mine aren't all the way down. Uh, these on the 61, it's a little bit of a different angle on the neck. So uh, it just happens to be higher on this one than on my SG3. But if you put the stop piece all the way down, whether it's an Epiphone, a Gibson, or any sort uh, an LTD, whatever, and you grab this uh, stop piece and you put those screws all the way down, you're going to have extreme tension on the bridge which will sound fine, but you're going to notice your strings are going to be really, really, really stiff. And the next thing you're going to notice is pop goes the E string or B string or whatever. Almost every time you play it, you're going to be breaking a string because you have way too much tension on the bridge that you just don't need. So go until the bridge is just until you, like, if you hear the buzzing on the bridge and you will hear it, you got to listen for it, but you will hear it. Just go until you hear the buzzing and then just add a little bit of tension equally until that buzzing goes away. Once that buzzing goes away, you might have to play around with it. You still might find the tension not quite where you want it. I like the, uh, and again, depends on the gauge of the strings. I find nines are no good on Gibsons. I don't know. They just don't work on Gibsons. They just don't seem to intonate right. Uh, but that's maybe just my, my taste, right? Uh, so I go with tens and, you know, like, like, like I got lots of Every string, doesn't matter which string it is, the tension is almost perfectly even from this string, E to E. So it makes it a lot better. Uh, so I think that might also be a part of the tuning issues as well. Too much tension or not enough tension. So anyway, uh, hopefully that little stop bar trick uh, 